I know it's been raining all day. It's been it's been raining all day here, pouring down. You know, I didn't even know it was a tornado going on. Um, uh, I know uh, Shelly said, you know, I guess where her uh, child was at, her daughter it was a tornado. I need to do better. I don't be keeping up with stuff like that. Hey, Cheryl. So I just. I didn't even know. So I'm glad people are safe. Hey, Millie. Keep playing around like he gave a date. When it criticizes us, you know it's too late. That kind of caught me off guard. I had to do better with keeping up with what's going on in this world. I'd be so focused, you know. On this word and stuff, I don't even be at the time be looking at it. Hey, Taja. Granny's in that land down. You gotta reach out to them, Taja. They be, you know, they got time. It's not even seven o'clock yet, so that's, you know, that's how they be. Well, it is about to be seven o'clock. They go one on right there, Tarzan. Yeah, his name come out my lips. When I know I'm about to trip. Mommy can't be spending that ride, so I better get a grip. Can't be having God mad because my behavior about to flip. I need to stay on his good side before he write me out the script. I'm going outside so I can chat with my friends. And tell him about my God, how his love has no end. We are never too young to encourage each other. 
each other. We just need to understand how to love one another. Like he did. coming outside in a minute. Why you waiting? What you about to do now? I'm about to get it. About to get what? A blessing from God. Yeah, I'm with yeah, it. Yeah, Tazo's about to whoop. About to whoop y'all to cut him. She about to put y'all on the bill. <laughs> you are definitely the mother of the group because you gotta keep them in line. Artist, tell me this song. This is my nieces. Um, it's called "We Need 'Em" by the Burwell Sisters. It's my great nieces. It's on all platforms, so we need them, the Burwell sisters. A little song for the children. Oh, Jesus, Takata, you gotta go to Walmart, see if we can get you a new stomach and a head. But we don't go to Walmart. It'd probably be a deep bag. Go to Sprouts or something, get your new stomach in the head. You sound like me, how you know stuff I was going through one time. So, yeah, we definitely gonna put that in the prayer. Hey, Bree Bree, y'all probably you probably were laughing so hard last night, that's why your stomach and head is hurting. <laughs> but well, we definitely gonna pray for that. So you're not supposed to sin. I ain't coming to your church. And you making <laughs> I know she did. She owned it. Good job, Tajan. Now I pray for low key. Low key has been um, feeling bad. You're such a fraud. You're teaching this um, up a I don't know if she coming in tonight or not, but I know that's why she ain't come the other night. I had to pray for her. Me and my husband, because I forgot to pray for her on the um, Bible study, so we definitely want to remember her. Tonight. Key. I was saying, you, you know, we'll see if you come in and I wasn't feeling well. So glad to have you back, Lord. Good, good. It's good to hear love. Thank you. 
to get together for worship and to hear the word of God so that spirit can get nourished and to encourage one another because this walk can be hard and to remind everyone that our praises go to God. So you're not exposed to sin? I ain't coming to your church. And you making people pay tithes? I ain't coming to your church. The unsaved in that working? I ain't coming to your church. Give me a sense so I can explain why I ain't coming to your church. some good eating tonight you know paul talking about you know i love talking about paul so acts 22 through 24 tonight we're doing good little gabe how you doing love I ain't seen Shelly. Melissa, no one watches the show. Well, I can't speak for anybody else. I don't mess with the chosen. I don't mess with that. I could have sworn I said that to you before. When you're speaking words with no understanding, it's called confusion. You don't care. Instead, you're teaching people that God is not lucid. If all of us speak the same, what's the purpose of tongues? How you go from speaking intelligible to speaking real dumb? I don't know what scripture is. still be alive. Don't miss Jesus waiting for them tongues when he opened this sky. Oh, yeah, I'm being funny because you guys are a joke. Maybe then you'll open your eyes to keep from the hell and that smoke. Yeah. God gave you the gift for them tongues. Thank you, you know you're faking it. Wait, stop that line on him. You know you're faking it. Somebody told you that you need to speak in tongues to have the spirit lies. Uh-huh, that's why you faking it. Songs is not evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit. It was given to the early Christians, but you don't want to hear it. They were given the mission to go out to the nations to make the that songs out of silly. you. They I didn't see her earlier. Hey, love. Words are incorrect. And he said, now I'm looking for Hosanna. Open the church, sound the light. You spent the whole night drinking. You defend them tongues more than Benita Betrayal, the famous drink. Let somebody show you proof that your tongue is a facade. Oh, no, you telling lies. You don't know the word of God. It's not hard to understand what the apostles were doing. They were giving instructions and the gift they need to pursue it. They weren't speaking in Babel and in no one was right. They were speaking in different languages to lead the people to Christ. That's what you do with your gifts. It's used to build up the church. You don't let someone persuade you into faking God's word, no. Hey, cat. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, Jesus can't live apart. Their roommates reside. 
rotten and you split in your heart. Now, how is that possible when we Rochelle, know that they Hey, love. Have you love. never seen Jesus be the one that's dismissed? Never. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up for the boss. And take up, take up, take up, and take up your cause. He paid up, paid up, paid up. Yeah, he paid the cause. Now, shake up, 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 Spirit, so I'm built different. Satan run up on me, call on Jesus, then he get missing. God gave me power over the enemy. I'm equipped with it. I break them out. Luke 10 19, don't shake them off. I'm a soldier. I picked up my cross. I just shake them off with these scriptures. I'm kind of oh, used thank to you, Mariah. Don't do nothing he ain't been doing either. Ready to God be the glory, huh? Not to his devices. Thank I ain't you. To it. God it ain't nothing better. I'm one of his little steppers. I know the devil be listening. Listen at what I tell him. <laughs> she all right, Taja. Catch you in the end days. Like a fire. Yeah. She ain't never run back hey, to tell the, you know, artists about. <laughs> Rochelle, it's so good to see you, love. He try to touch me with that sin. I tell him, get back. I'm going to get my lick back with a sword of the spirit because I know he going to fear it. And when I call on Jesus' name, you better know he going to hear it. Yeah, that's how I shake the devil off. He tries to deceive many, but can't take them off. Not stronger than the one who died on the cross. So she all right. She... Christ, so I, I don't mean like that all this time. We make a choice in this life. You either die with him or get right. The devil ain't going down with no strikes. Walk by faith and not by sight. It's like it's only by invite. You better stand tall enough right, or he's coming like a thief in the night. Yeah, yeah. Be sober minded. The devil watching. He's steady plotting. You going the other way, but he's looking for more options. Once God plants that seed, just know it's going to blossom. So be empowered and know the God you serve is sovereign. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up for the boss. And take up, take up, take up, and take up your right, boss. He paid up, paid up, paid up. Yeah, he paid oh, the cause. Mm -hmm. shake up, shake up, shake up, shake the devil door. Yeah, she do be sneaking in, don't she, Tyler? All right, let's see what kind of sounds we gonna do today. I think I'm gonna do my favorite one today. And, uh, Some good old sounds going. Oh, thank you, little Gabe. All right. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name for waking us up this morning. Bring, bring us to another day that we have never seen before. We thank you. We give you all the glory for it. Lord God, we thank you again for us assembling together to learn your word that we may apply to our life so we can be trained up on how to live righteous and live a life that's pleasing to you. And we give you the glory for it. We thank you, Lord God, for consistency, for those who are always here, those who are always eager to get your truth. We thank you for those who are feeling bad and they still take the time out to make it. They still put you first. And feed, and feed their spirits with the word. And Lord God, we lift up your people on today, those who are sick, those who <clears throat> are um, not feeling well. Takadia, we um, pray for low key. We thank you that she's here. We ask, Lord God, for your will to be done concerning them for complete healing. We thank you, Lord God, that you have already shown yourself in them because they, as we said earlier, that you they still put you first, Lord. And we give you the honor and the glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for comforting Carmen and her family as they um, went through the loss of a loved one. We thank you, Lord God, for always being there for us. Even when times are bad, we know that you will never forsake us. And we give you the glory for it. And Father God, we ask on tonight that you bless this Bible study. That people will get understanding of your word and apply it to their life. We thank you always, and we give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Acts 
22. Now, you know, um, you know, in 21, this is where we're, we're speaking on um, Paul being taken up. You know, they put him in the in the barracks. And so now, um, you're welcome, love. So now we're speaking on, um, hey, Hosanna, you snuck up in here. Now he's talking before the people. Um, so let's start reading Acts 22. Brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in the city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole country of the elders can hear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished and let's speak let's speak on this now um paul is before um the people pleading his case because you know they have given him the he, he you know they have put all these false charges on him this is um coming from these asian jews right now he said that he spoke in hebrew this is most likely in the um aramaic language and this is because this was commonly spoken in Palestine. Palestine, so um, it kind of threw them off, like you know, because you know, like I said, they expected him to not um, know anything. So of course they put these false charges on him, and so he was to letting them know that he is a Jew, you know, so that because they was treating him like he was like not honoring the Jewish heritage, the Jewish um, customs. So he was letting them know I'm a um, I'm a Jew, you know. He was in. I was a student under um, Gamaliel, so that was he was letting them know that um, he understood the law because that's what Gamaliel taught the law, the Old Testament. So he received. So Paul was letting them know I, I received extensive training. The reason why I was extensive training because Gamaliel was one of the um, known rabbi uh, in Jerusalem. He was all. He was known. He was. He was. Um, very educated when it came to the law so paul was under him that's where he received his training that's where he received the old how he understood the old testament that's where he got his um uh, rabbi traditions and so even though it had a lot of was heresy he still knew um the old testament now he did mention it he didn't mention um that he was a pharisee to the crowd he didn't mention that yet so in light of all that you know um, the charge that Paul uh, was opposing the law is was ridiculous, you know, considering who he was already. So why would I oppose something? And I'm, I've always been a Jew. I always represented the Jewish heritage. I used to even persecute the people that came with um, this same type of, basically the same type of teaching that I'm giving now. I used to persecute people who followed the way. So to say that I'm not... Um, for my Jewish heritage is ridiculous. To say that I'm opposing the law that they was living on, that they was living on for is ridiculous. And so that, you know, so far that was his uh, defense. And so he, um, he was letting him know his zeal for the Jewish heritage. And so that right there kind of like outstripped the hearers. Like, okay, so he, he might, you know. But let's keep reading. He said, as I was on my way and drew near to Damascus about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, what? shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, rise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of the light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one, Ananias, a devout 
man, according to the law, well spoken of by the Jews who lived there, came to me, standing by me, and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at the very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to, um, to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to every one of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out to Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that, that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, um, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Now, of course, he's explaining what his experience he went through, why he has changed um, his belief. He was saying, Okay, so I was this person, but I had an experience with Jesus, so um, my belief has changed. Now, when he said, um, when, you know, he said that for, for one thing, in six, he was like, he was on his way um, to Damascus and about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly came around. Now, he mentioned that it was about noon. Why? Because he wanted people to understand how bright that light was. Because, you know, the sun is already shining at noon. So that, so that light was shot, was brighter than the sun. To the point that it blinded him. That's why he wanted to emphasize the time of day it was. Um, because he wanted to emphasize how bright the light was. And so when he was talking, he said that the um that the people that was with him, those who were with me, they saw the light but did not understand. And what he was saying is that they didn't understand the voice. And this is not to um contradict what he said in 9 7, um, about um them not, you know, it was I think he said somebody they didn't know who he was or something um to that effect. But he spoke, Jesus was speaking only to Paul. So only he understood the Lord's words. That's how it is. That's how it um, basically was when, you know, when, when, when Jesus chooses you, you know, when you have the Holy Spirit, only we understand the word of God, the people that's Holy Spirit filled. So the fact that he had called Paul and he was talking to Paul, this is the only reason why Paul could understand what he was saying. And it was everybody else didn't couldn't hear or even understand what was, where it was coming from because he wasn't addressing, he wasn't talking to them. He was talking to Paul. He didn't choose them. He was he chose Paul. So when God chooses you and fill you with his spirit, then you're gonna understand his words. And um and other people are gonna be lost. And that's how it is today. So he understood the words. Um they and he, the people that come and just heard sounds, they just they couldn't make out the words. So um, it's another uh, proof to show how amazing that um, God is. Now, when he said uh, in twenty two seventeen that when he returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, that um, he fell into a trance. This is him going into the spirit realm. You know, a lot of times we have visions. A lot of times we go into the spirit when, you know, when we need it. If God is trying to reveal something to us. So he was carried into the spirit realm to receive a revelation from Jesus. And keep in mind, Jesus was the one that was teaching him the word of God. So. Just shows how much God never changes. Same thing he did. He did the same thing with them. He taught. He taught them for three years and he did the same thing with Paul. So he said, as, um, let's, let's keep reading. Up to, uh, up to this word, they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing out their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barak, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. Um, but when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, um, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. 
the Tribune answered, I brought this citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, but I am a citizen by birth. So the, those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. But on the next day, desiring to know the real reason why he um, was being accused by the Jews, he unbound him and commanded the chief priests and all the council to meet, and he brought Paul down and set him before them. This is Paul using his Roman citizenships to get him out of there being flogged. Um, flogging, you know, it was about like when, about like how they did Jesus, you know, um, they scored um, Jesus flogging. Um, let me see. Can I... They do the same thing. They tie you, they stretch you. They stretch you so your skin can be, you know, to make the uh, flogging more uh, effective. So um, let me see if I can find pictures of what they used to flog. Now, flog. This is what this is what they use to flog. Um, right here. But this is probably what they use one to use for Paul, because this is what the Romans be using. The flog with the metal at the tips of the leather um you know they they're evil so that's what they use um for flogging for what they want to use for paul yeah they time up against the tree time up make sure they had their arms all the way up stretch them out so when they hit it can you know be that much more painful now um yeah so when they threw off their cloaks, this was them preparing um, to stone Paul. That's what they wanted to do. Um, you know, because they, they're supposed to be so in horror of his of his blasphemy. Now, um, when they when it says they were flinging dust, flinging dust into the air, this is just uh, a way to describe their intense emotions um, towards what Paul has supposedly been doing. Now. When Paul said that he was a Roman citizen, and he said, um, the, tribune, the tribune answered, I brought this citizenship for a large sum. Roman citizens, um, they weren't for sale. They was officially not for sale, but could sometimes be obtained by bribing these corrupt officials. Because, you know, they were corrupt. Um, but Paul wasn't, that didn't happen Paul. Paul was born a Roman citizen and that's what he was making clear but he still wanted to understand the reason why um he was being accused by the jews so he wanted to um he commanded to see the priests and um the chief priests and the council to find out why so um let's read this we are uh, going into 23 So in looking intently at the council, Paul said, Brothers, I have lived my life before God in all good conscience up to this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Are you sitting to judge me according to the law? And yet contrary to the law, you order me to be struck? Those who stood by said, Will you rebel God's high priest? And Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest, for it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler to your to your people. Now, when Paul perceived that one part were, Sad were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. And when he said this is a dissension, when he said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees says um, that there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledged them all. Then a great clamor arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contended sharply. We find nothing wrong with this man. What if a spirit of the angel spoke to him? 
And when the dissension became violent, the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by force and bring them and bring him into the barracks. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. Um, oh, okay, love. All right, so, um, Paul said, he looked, let's start with 23 and 1. He said, and looking intently at the council, Paul said, brothers, I have lived my life before God in all good conscience up to this day. Now, when he says good conscience, he's talking about the soul's warning system. You know, our conscience allows us to, um, to contemplate motives and actions and allows us to um, determine morally what is right and what is wrong. And you're, you know, you know, he speaks on this in Romans. Paul also mentions this in Romans, like Romans 2. So in order to work as God designed it, the conscience must be informed to the highest um, moral and spiritual level and the best standards. Um, and that means you have to, then that would mean you have to submit to the Holy Spirit through God's word. Because that's the highest you know, that is the highest moral and spiritual level you can get. It's the Holy Spirit. So you have to you have to be submitting to the Holy Spirit through God's word. And um and so that's what Paul was saying. I have um, you know, in all good conscience, he he has he said he has um lived his life before God in all good conscience. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is gonna make sure you live your life at the highest um level through um through good conscience so ananias um this is not to get this confused with the ananias that's in the um that's of the gospel um that i think that's in i think it's talked about uh in john i'm not sure this is not the same ananias um this this man right here was one of uh israel's most cruelest and corrupt high priests this is what he's talking about and um, this is this is him that's spoken of in Acts four six, and because he was so pro Roman, um, his you know his pro Roman policies um, had alienated him from um, the Jewish people, because then they end up murdering him later. And so um, he commanded that they strike Paul. And that was just him just maintaining his cruel and corrupt character, wanting to strike him for no reason at all. And so Paul said, um, then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Now, why did he call him a whitewashed wall? Well, let's go to Ezekiel 13. Let's see if we can find that. Let's just do it 10. All right, so he said in Ezekiel, he said precisely, this is this is Ezekiel 13, 10. He said precisely because they have misled my people saying peace, there is no peace. And because when the people build a wall, these prophets smear it with whitewash. Say to those who smear it with whitewash that it shall fall. Now, why he um, said it? Because... The whitewash wall, this also um, is, a, is something that's in reference to this also in Matthew 23, 27. False prophets had um, lured the people into false security. You know, phony pe um, peace promises that, um, you know, these fake promises, while at the same time, sin continued uh, to be the brink of God's judgment. So it was, it was like building a defective wall and whitewashing it to make it look like it was um safe. Make it look good. When the wall the whole time was doomed to collapse. And this was and it was gonna collapse when God bring his bring the storm. And that's what he was talking about. 
That's why he called him a whitewashed wall. Because you, you, you're you you're basically defective. You're not, you know, you're, uh, you, you, you're not safe. You're a defect. And when the storm comes, you're going to fall. But see, Paul was out of order. Paul was wrong on this when he did this. When he got mad and he said that he said, because he was angry, he was outraged. Because um, he was outraged by the, 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 the high priest's flagrant violation of the Jewish law. And because, he, and because of that, he became so extremely angry. And he went out of God's character. He went out of his own character. His reaction was wrong. Because he's supposed to be a follower of Christ. And so th the same thing happened to Jesus. They did the same thing to Jesus. And so, but Jesus reacted calmly, asking for the reason why um, you, 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 you smite me. Why, why, why the reason for the blow? He asked him calmly. But um, Paul was out of line because um, even though the, the guy was evil and corrupt, and eyes were evil and corrupt, he still was a God-ordained priest. And because he was a God-ordained priest, you still have to give him the respect that's due to him. And so, um, and so Paul was out of line. Paul saying Paul went against God. But one thing about Paul, see, this is the beauty of you. Because remember, he just said that he lived a life um, before God in good conscience. So that means he had the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit going to do? Convict you. And what happened when you get to four? And when you get to five, he said, and Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest. For it is written, you shall not speak evil, a ruler of your people. See, this is why we have to meditate on God's word. Because when you have committed a sin or you're about to commit a sin, that Holy Spirit is going to bring that word back to your remembrance. And you're going to apply it to your life. Oh, I remember you said in your word, Lord, that we can't speak evil of the ruler of your people. And so he realized it. Why? Because he had the Holy Spirit to convict him. He was out of line, but he was convicted quickly. Why? Because he has the Holy Spirit. And so, um, and so with that being said, he was out of line. He said he didn't know. Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest. How was it that he didn't know? Well, we have to take his word, his word for it at face value. It could have been so many reasons why he didn't know that he wasn't a high priest, because I mean, Paul could have had eye problems because, you know, he was getting abused a lot. He got beat up a lot and, you know, he had injuries and he had sickness or his anger. He had so much anger that made him forget who he was talking to, you know. Or he could have just been um, using sarcasm because um, Ananias was, wasn't was acting like a priest, you know. Or it could have been because... Um, Paul had been gone from Jerusalem for so long that when he came back, he didn't even recognize who he was. You know, it's just so many reasons why he wouldn't have known he was a, a, um, a high priest. And then at the same time, um, you remember he asked him, he wanted to email him in um, verse 30 and 22. He said that um, he wanted to know the reason why that he was being accused. And so he com um, they, he commanded the chief priest and all the council to meet. So they, you know, when you when you're meeting, this was like a un you know informal meet. This is like out, out of the blue, you know. They so they pop, they could have actually came not even in their um, attire, their priest attire, since this was just a uninformed um, meet. They could have just you know let's just go see what he what he, what he you know talking about. And so it could have been he wasn't even in their, in his attire for him to recognize that he wasn't he was the high priest but either way he was convicted he realized he was wrong and he admitted that he was wrong and i'm sure he asked for forgiveness it's like i said that's why it's always important to meditate on scripture because when you sin and you about to sin that holy spirit is going to bring that scripture back to your remembrance i don't know make me chin check you and so that's what Paul did. He remembered the scripture and he realized he was in error. All right. So now in six, when he, uh, when Paul perceived that one part of this, this, he's talking to the San, the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin. So he had part of them with Sadducees and part of them with Pharisees. And so, um, 
And since Ananias was such a corrupt and, you know, evil individual, Paul was convinced that he wasn't going to get a fair trial, you know, a, a fair hearing. So, um, so he took a bold step. And he, he, since he was a Pharisee, and possibly a former member of the, San, the Sanhedrin, um, because it, like when you get when you get to Acts twenty six, it's kind of you know he did the voting and stuff like that. So he probably he probably was a former member of the Sanhedrin. So he was well aware of the tension between the Pharisee, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees. Why? Because um, they've always had tension. Even when Jesus time, we knew that they had tension. So, but but the Sanhedrin was made up of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and so he appealed to the Pharisees for support. Why? Because he was a Pharisee. And so um, one thing about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because when he brought up, what did he say? Um, he cried out in the council, brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. Now, the Sadducees didn't believe in a bodily resurrection, remember? But the Pharisees did. Now, this is not to say that Paul was trying to use that to his advantage, and um, and try to cause tension between them two. This was, uh, you know, the 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 focal point of this whole issue is because Jesus resurrected. It was, you know, on Christianity, so it makes sense. Oh, you know, to 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 uh, talk with the Pharisees because the Pharisees do believe in a bodily resurrection because that was their hope. They was hoping on um, resurrection. That was their hope for the day. So, so um, it just makes sense to you know try to get to gain their support, and so um, he reminded them, of course, that he was a Pharisee, and he appealed to their, um, and then he appealed to the theological differences between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and since the Sadducees don't believe in a bodily resurrection, um, Paul created a split between them. It caused an argument it caused a big disagreement it called a, a bit dissension that arose and it wasn't Paul intentionally doing this on purpose like I said resurrection is the focal point um and so um it caused a big uproar and they needed to get Paul up out of there you know before it get out of hand since you know in their eyes Paul is the reason why this started this is the reason why all these things uh went down the way it did, and like I said, it wasn't a selfish plot on Paul to divide the San the Sanhedrin, but the Pharisees believed in the resurrection and afterlife. You know, so their beliefs put them closer to Christianity than the Sadducees. And um, and remember, the uh, in in Scripture it shows conversion of some Pharisees, some Pharisees coming to Christ. You know, you had the um, you had Nicodemus. You know, um. You know this. Uh, what is that? Um, who else? It's, it's it's in it's somebody in uh, Acts in, in Acts fifteen five actually. I think that might that might have been Nicodemus, but um, let's go. Acts fifteen five. Oh yeah, it was just some of the Pharisees out of Pharisees. Um, that belonged to the part of the Pharisees that came over to salvation. They was trying. They was doing, these was the ones that was trying to um, say that the Gentiles needed to follow the same thing that their father needed to be circumcised. So these was Pharisees that were converted. So there were Pharisees that was actually converted, but never was a Sadducee converted. You know, it'd be kind of hard to convert a Sadducee, and they don't even believe in um, death and resurrection. So. Um, it, it, it kind of, you know, helped Paul. It kind of um, helped Paul get them to side with him. But that wasn't why he did it. He wasn't doing it to cause any kind of uh, grief. It just happened. It just happened to be that way. And so in 23, 9, what he say? Um, then a great clamor arose and some of the scribes of the Pharisees part. And the scribes of the Pharisees part, as this became so intense, it became so intense with their theological disagreement on... Um, with um with the Sadducees that the Pharisees then started defending Paul. They was willing to defend Paul. Even though he was the leader of the hated Christians because that of that belief, that theological belief, 
they depend upon. So in 23, 12, let's keep, let's read. When it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food till we have killed Paul. And therefore, you alone with the council give notice to the tribune to bring him down to you as though you were going to determine this case more exactly. And we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now the son of Paul's sister heard of the ambush. So he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the, tri to the tribune, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, Paul, the prisoner called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, as he has something to say to you. The tribune took him by the hand and going aside, asking him privately, What is it that you have to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire somewhat more closely about him. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him, who have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor, or, nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, charging him, Tell no one that you have informed me of these things. Good looking out, nephew. <laughs> That's basically what it was. That was Paul's nephew. So um, this was... Uh, Good looking out on his part. Now, when he said twenty three twelve, when he said bound themselves by an oath. Now, this when it, this meaning of bound themselves by an oath, this is mean pl placing a curse on themselves, like they did in like Galatians when they was talking about this in Galatians one eight through nine. If they failed, this them invoking divine judgment. Now, these were Sadducees. The Sadducees was in agreement with this. Remember, the Pharisees was um, defending uh, Paul. The Sadducees were not. So. um the Sadducees was in agreement with, um, right, right place at the right time with, um, killing him. So Paul, um, so he, when he went to tell Paul, keep in mind, Paul was, was, um, not under arrest, but he was in protective custody. So in that case, he could have visitors. That's why his nephew was able to go in there and tell him, um, what was going on. Now, they took it seriously. These people took this, this threat seriously, and so they took precautions they needed to save Paul and to get him out of Jerusalem. Um, remember, he had that visit from God, and, you know, and he told him that he was going to be uh, speaking in Rome. So if he made this promise, and the promise is going to come to pass. So, of course, even though all these things was going down, God's will is still going to be done. So what happened? Paul get out of Jerusalem, and where did they take him? They take him to Rome. They take him home. Um, to, uh, I think it's Felix, but they took him to An An Antipatris. Antipatris is a Roman military post, and it's like 40 miles out of Jerusalem. And so they went, to, they took him to uh, Felix. Now, we're going to get into uh, Felix right now. And so when they took him to, and um, let's just, let's just uh, keep reading. 23. Then he called out, called two of the centurions and said, Get ready, 200 soldiers with 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen to go as far as Caesarea at the third hour of the night. Also provide mounts. Now, the third hour of the night is 9 o'clock. So also provide mounts for Paul to ride and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. And he wrote a letter to this, to this effect. Claudius Lysias to his excellency, the governor, Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was brought to be killed by them. When I came upon them with the soldiers and rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman citizen and desiring to know the charge for which they were accusing him, I brought him down to their council. I found that he was being accused about questions of their law, but charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And when it was disclosed to me that there will be a plot against the man. I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you 
that they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him by the night to Antipatris. And on the next day, they returned to the barracks, letting the horsemen go on with him. When they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province was he from. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive, and he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's praetorium. Now, the reason why Felix needed to determine what where, where he was from, his um, asked where he was from, when he said where what province was he from, because he needed to um, make sure he had jurisdiction to hear Paul's case. And when Paul told him where he was, he realized he did have jurisdiction. So let's keep reading. Let's read the last chapter. Now, and after five days, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and a spokesman, one Tertullus. They laid before the governor their case against Paul. And when he had been summoned, um, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Since though you, we enjoy much peace, and since by your foresight most excellent Felix reforms are being made for this nation every way and, in, and everywhere, we accept this with all gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you in your kindness to hear us briefly, for we have found this man a plague, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world and is a ringleader of the set of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, but we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to find out from him about everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge of affirming that all these things were so. And when the governor had nodded to him to speak, Paul replied, Knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation, I cheerfully make my defense. You can verify that it is not more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem, and they did not find me disputing with anyone or stirring up a crowd either in the temple or in the synagogues or in the city. Neither can they prove to you what they now bring up against me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid, laid down by the law and written in the prophets, having a hope in God, which these men themselves accept, that there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust, so I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man. Now, after several years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to present offerings. While I was doing this, they found me purified in the temple without any crowd or tumult. But some Jews from Asia, they ought to be here before you and to make an accusation should they have anything against me. Or else let these men themselves say what wrongdoing they found when I stood before the council. Other than this one thing that I cry out while standing among them, it is with respect to the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you this day. Now, they tried to accuse Paul of riots. This is what you see called sedition. When you look in Galatians, when he, when he uh, named all the things that won't inherit the kingdom of God, one of the things is sedition. Sedition is riots. Now that's the most that's one of the most serious charges that they had against Paul because the Romans didn't um even though uh the the Romans didn't you know recite rebellion, they was against it, they didn't um deal with that. Had they been able uh to let that charge stick in Jerusalem, Paul probably would have been killed, probably executed for that, because you know, this was a big thing to cause a riot. Now, Paul was not um, flattering Felix when he reminded him um, of the, uh, when he said this in 2310, and when the governor had nodded to him and speak, Paul replied, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation, I cheerfully made my defense. This was not him trying to flatter Felix. This was him... Um, let him know that he was acquainted with the Jewish laws and the customs and beliefs. And so that will make uh, Felix give him a just verdict. And so um, 
Paul was making that point. Now, he was making the point that even if I had wanted to cause a riot, what would, what would I have had the time? You know, because I um I came here. I ain't been here about 12 days. Remember when we read in Acts? Remember when he came? Remember when he collected that offering for them? See, he brought that up too. Remember he had everybody collect the offering? And he, you know, sent Tim and Timothy them on, you know, ahead of him. And he came and bring the offerings and the alms to them. When he came there, what, you know, remember when they told him that he was unclean because he had been dealing with the Gentiles? So what he had to do, he had to go in there and um, purify himself. And it took, what, seven days for that to happen? So the other five days, he's been, you know, uh, you know, dealing with them. So how is it, when, when, so he like, so when can I have caused a riot? How is that even possible? So that's what he was explaining. Like, there is no way I could have done that. Even if I had wanted to cause a riot, I couldn't have done that. Because of the time frame, don't line up. And so, um, and that's why he was saying in 11, that's why you say you can verify that. Um, it's been more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. And so, um, and when I went there, they didn't find me disputing with anybody. You know, that was his case. Them, you know, them Asian Jews and all, they didn't see me doing that. And so, um, when he said in 15, he said that, um, I, for, he said 14, but this I confess to you that according to the way, which is, um, the gospel, which they call a sect. I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written in the prophets, having hope in God, which these men themselves accept that there will be a resurrection, both of the just and the unjust. Now, when he said hope in God, this is the great hope for the Jewish people because of the resurrection. They're waiting on the resurrection. So it was Paul that stood um, on that tradition, um, um, traditional Jewish theology, it wasn't the Sadducees. So he was making that point. He was bringing up the fact in 17, where he, like I said, where he brought the alms and the offering to them. Um, and, um, you know, and so there was no way he could have done that. And so, um, so then he said, but some Jews from Asia, they ought to be here before you and to make an accusation. Now, when he, when he, and he said, um, so the, so they weren't even there. They didn't even show up to the hearing. They made the accusation, but these, these Asian Jews didn't show up to the hearing. So he said, they ought to be here before you and to make the accusation, should they have anything against me or else let those men themselves say what wrongdoing they found when I stood before the council. Other than this, one thing that I cried out while standing among them is, with respect to the resurrection of the dead, and I am on trial before you to this day. That's when you remember he brought this up when he made them know when he made it known that he was a Pharisee, and he knew the Pharisees believed in the um, death and resurrection, believed in resurrection. So he brought that up. So that's the only thing that you have against him. And but but believing in the resurrection was not a crime. It wasn't a crime in the Jewish or the Roman law. So you have nothing on him. Is basically what he's saying. So um and and and. Neither was Paul. Paul wasn't even responsible for that feud that they had between the Sadducees and the Pharisees that erupted um, at that council. And so, um, like I said, it was, just a bu it was just unnecessary. So let's let's keep reading. But Felix, having a rather accurate knowledge of the way, put them off, saying, "When um, Lysias, Lysias, how do you pronounce this person's name? The tribune comes down. I will decide your case." Then he gave orders to the centurion that he should be kept in the in custody, but have some liberty, and that none of his friends should be prevented from attending to his needs. After some days, Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, and he sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. And as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, Felix was alarmed and said, Go away for the present. When I get an opportunity, I will summon you. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given him by Paul. So he sent for him often and conversed with him. When two years had elapsed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus. And desiring to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. 
Now, this is messed up, but... In 22, he said, but Felix, having a rather accurate knowledge of the way, put them off saying, when Lysias the Tribune comes down, I will decide your case. When he said put them off, though, this is what I'm talking about, that the witnesses that Paul was talking about, that, that, that actually that, um, falsely accused him, those Jews from Asia, they failed to show up for the hearing. Um, and since they couldn't prove him wrong, the only verdict that Felix could render was that was consistent with the Roman law was uh, uh, not guilty. That was the only thing. That was the only um, because it was nothing against him. Anything else would have been against. So Drusilla, when he said he came down with Drusilla, his wife, this is where it, um, it gets good. Now Drusilla was the youngest daughter of Hera Agrippa that we read of in Acts twelve one. Herod, Herod of Greece, but that was his youngest daughter, Drusilla. Now she was a she was a she was Jewish. So most likely she was the one that gave him the knowledge of the way, what he said in 24, but Felix having a rather accurate knowledge of the way. So most likely she was the one that taught him that. But the thing about this, she was the youngest daughter of Herod, and he was so struck by her beauty. That he lured her away from her husband. And at the time of Paul's hearing, she won't number like 20 years old. So when he brought, um, when Paul brought up in 25, when he said, and he had, as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, and it said Felix was alarmed. We know God demands, <laughs> play, play. We know God demands righteousness of all people because of his holy nature, right? Which is, you know, you'll see this in all throughout the scripture. Matthew 5, 48, 1 Peter, um, uh, chapter 1, 15, um, 15 through 16. And so, if, if God demands righteousness of all people because of his holy nature, that means all men and women are to conform to that standard. And to, in order to conform to that standard, that requires self-control. Um, and so, um, and failure to have self-control and conform to, um, to God's law, to God's righteousness, even apart from, um, salvation will render judgment. So this is what they was talking about. And this is why Felix was alarmed. Why? Because he was living with the woman he had lured away from her husband. So he was, he was, um, he lacked righteousness and self-control. And so, um, that, when he realized that he faced judgment um, for that, he was alarmed. And so he hastily dismissed Paul. That's why I said Felix was alarmed. Go away for the present. And the reason why he sent him away, because, um, and he said, I, when, he, um, when I get the opportunity, I will summon you. That's it, Gabriel. Felix was scared. He... When he said, "I um, I when I when I get the opportunity to summon you," he was trying to get through that conviction. He needed that conviction moment to pass, and when it passed, then he had come for him. But of course, Felix foolishly missed the opportunity. He passed up the opportunity to repent. And so, with that being said, he was um, he was succeeded by. Uh, that the new person, Portia's Festus, and desiring to do the Jews a favor, he left Paul in prison. Purposely did that. He was ill. He was, they didn't sit right with him, knowing that he um, was doing the very thing that God uh, forbids. And so he left him in prison. <sighs> you can't get mad at Paul for telling the truth. You know, the truth hurts. And so that is it. If you guys have any questions on these three chapters, let me know. Yep. He knew he was innocent. He wouldn't accept the Jews. And, um... But, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. This is, this is a prime example of people choosing to please man over God. But then you gotta understand that God, God allowed us that. This was, this was Paul. This is the will for Paul. You know, this thing it had to go down the way it needed to go down. This was to build up Paul's. Um, this is to make him grow spiritually. 
showing this is let him this is God revealing his character to him. This is God letting him know no matter what you go through, I'm gonna be here with you, I'm gonna be by your side, but this has to go down the way it needs to go down. And the way it go down, you're going all you're gonna do is inherit the kingdom of God. You just gotta see how bad you want it. You know, so um and that's how that's that's how it is. He told Paul that he was gonna end up going to Rome, end up being in Rome. Unfortunately he was in prison. But um he made it to Rome. And then, you know, this is the world that we're in. You know, people hate um, the people of God. With it. You know, Jesus already had warned them. If they hate you, know that they hated me first. And we saw how they did Jesus for their hate for him. So you knew they was going to get the same treatment. So he was basically prepping them for that. You know, you know, you know better than me. You know, I did the same thing. I went out and taught this word and they did me the same way. You know better than me. Yeah, Paul did spend a lot of time in prison. That's why me and my husband did that skit. About every time he mentioned Jesus, he was in prison. He got arrested. When things get crazy, that's right. This is, this is, see, and I'm glad you said that, Gabriel. You said when things get crazy, we got to remember this. This, uh, this is the reason why the Bible is for our correction. This is the reason why the Bible is to teach us on how to live righteous. This is why the Bible is to teach us on how to be patient, how to understand God's character, so we can take that smooth walk, that smooth spiritual walk. We know it's going to be some bumpy roads, but that's the purpose of this word of God so we can maintain. See, Paul was already given this word by Jesus himself. He already knew what they expect. This is why he was able to maintain. This is why they were like, no, don't go to Jerusalem. You make a kid like dude. Come on. I ain't afraid to die. I know what I know what's coming with my death. Everything that God has shown me has happened. So I know what's gonna happen at the end. So that's why um that's why I'm glad you said that. The the Bible is is that's our weapon, that's our tool, that's our understanding, that's you know. This is this is our hope. You know, this is our trainer. And so um this is why it's so important that we read this word. So we can understand God's character, so we can understand what they went through because you know we we have to we're going to follow the same thing they were Jesus was the example for them as well as us. And so is Jesus been an example that you see the rest of the apostles going through the same thing? It's just, you know, we need this word. Yeah, that's right. This, this is our sword. We need this word. If we don't have this word, we don't know God. This is why people be all kinds of saying all kinds of crazy mess, don't understand um, stuff because they don't, they're not eating this word up. This is our spiritual food. This is what's going to make us healthy. Amen, amen. time is it we got through early I love them early I love them early ones this you know it's everywhere it's everywhere else and I have to I have to agree with you on it and, and then we just got to stand we got to stand firm and the thing about it is it's not like Jesus asked us to do something to do something that he wouldn't do you know, he tell you to stay. He said you're gonna you're gonna have persecution and endure to the end. You know, it ain't like you know it ain't like he telling you to do something he didn't do. And that's how people take it. Like why we gotta be facing persecution? He did it. He ain't gonna ask you to do something he didn't do, and he endured it worse than us. So we do what he do. We gotta we know we're gonna experience, and we're not experiencing it like him. You know, some people have left this world in Christ and didn't even experience getting not one thing. They just stay rooted in Christ. So you can't sit up and get mad and be like, why Why we got to endure this? Because he did it. And did it worse than us. He took a worse beating. Yep. You got to trust they're going to get us to it no matter what. And the thing about it, and the, the reason why you can trust in it, because he has always, he has never lied. He has no reason to. He has never lied. He has never felt us. He has never not shown us. And a lot of times, God will be showing people stuff, and they don't be having a clue because they don't. They ain't, you know, they ain't where they need to be. You know, like like when he did when he tried to when he tried to get people in line, like what he did with Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh when he sent them dreams. He telling them what they need to do, and then they didn't understand, and they got somebody to interpret, and they still didn't want to do right. You know what I mean? Like you know, I don't trust all that. And then when you get what you get, then you're mad. 
It ain't like God ain't trying to warn you. God, it ain't like he don't want to, he don't want to see us live holy. It's not like he don't desire that. But Paul is a prime example, all of them actually, prime example of someone that endured to the end, just like he said. When he said those who endure to the end will be saved. And a lot of people took this as, you you know, people that uh, can, this is you can lose your salvation. No, he's telling you, you're going to face persecution. Take it to the end. You know what I mean? Because like, like, endure it to the end. That's just what, and, and if you endure it to the end, you're just going to be saved. Why? Because you obviously saved if you endure it to the end. Person ain't say gonna bail out. I like, look this little this little serving Jesus thing ain't look too rough. You know what I'm saying? Dude, don't hit me in the forehead early. I ain't got time for that, man. Say so don't know why then he be out. Yeah, because you won't never really uh <laughs> you won't never really root it. You won't never really dare. He ain't call you. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad this inspired a lot of you guys. I'm glad I just gave you understanding on, you know, it's we're gonna face some rough times. Our our rough times we facing like now is people just um, speaking against us. Speaking against us. You know, when we when we stand um for God and y'all always do y'all think y'all holding up. Y'all don't even know shoot the uh, you know, that's that's the stuff we get. You know. I was calling us names for speaking the truth and standing on the word of God. Coming back, talking about you lying, you wrong, and you call them. When you call them out, they come back. You know, this 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 is petty stuff we'll be getting compared to what Jesus and the apostles and the went through. Thank you guys for the gifts. Thank you. So. I'd be saying in the new layoffs. Thanks for the rose. <laughs> Agape just not coming in. Agape, you better be, you better have got booted out and just coming back in. You getting a weapon. All right, y'all don't have any questions. Yeah, you won't really, you won't really late. Um, yeah, they get the belt. These people get the belt. I, I've been slack on the belt. I'm gonna have to get back at the belt. Say so you at work sneaking on the phone. You know, I always, you know, the 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 work thing is always a great excuse for me. It's the only time I let people slide. <laughs> Under that is cool. That that little that thing that was nice that little uh, son. Can I teach us? Can I teach you more? Amen, Rochelle. That is so cool. What you what you want to know? What you want to know? Who is that? The second I teach them more, Kaz. Kaz, you better not be no dude up in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are so cool. Okay, you feel me? Okay, good. Awesome. I guess we can have a little Bible talk since it is really early. If y'all got questions, just don't be going way left. You know, I ain't really about way left of it. You know. Yeah, I give you a little time. I do got to get up in the morning. Four hour physical therapy. I ain't looking forward to it. Nah, please no. Don't come to me about no tongues. Because you come to me with that, you're going, y'all need to go straight to the podcast. Don't come to me with that. Don't come to me about no. Yeah. Physical therapy. My shoulder. My shoulder, my shoulder got worse though. It's like when she changed the exercise, 
it was getting, it was getting, you know, I was getting to a point where like, okay, I'm getting good, and then changed up the exercise. Now my shoulder is killing me. So I don't know um, what's going on with that. And so I gotta go see my um, orthopedic doctor in about a couple of weeks. I'm gonna see what they're gonna say. Yeah, it got worse. I don't trust nobody, but I, you know, workers comp. I got, you know, I gotta go. I'm out of work, so I have to go to the uh, appointments and all that in order to continue being paid for it. And it was doing good. We was on point. I was like, my shoulder was just on point. Like, yes, it's about time to go back to work. And then she like, okay, like, we gotta try to test it. You know, it was the, it was the, it was the. The new thing that made it worse. So um, we're gonna stop the new thing and just continue what I was doing. But it just seemed like it's like a setback. Not that I'm really pressed about going back to work, but I don't wanna be, you know, if I ain't got to be out, kind of enjoy being out. I just don't be looking forward to them four hour um, sessions. Up in a place of four hours. I'm like, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Oh, thank y'all. The prayer. Thank you, Carmen. I can't believe y'all have no questions. I can't believe it. Still raining out there. It rained all day. You know, I didn't even know it was supposed to rain. The Holy Spirit always do. You know why? Because I be I have my headsets. I'm the only one in physical therapy that have headsets on. I put my headsets on and either listen. I most of the time be listening to these um, audio books. You know? And those audio books be like three to four hours long. <laughs> I listen to that and I may break out and listen to some music. Because, I mean, they do leave me alone. So, I, I got a sheet that I follow. I just go right on in, get my sheet, and just go down the list. Stuff I'm supposed to do and be left alone. And they be kind of wondering why I be kind of like antisocial. I come in, I speak to everybody, get them they love, and then I just go to work. You know, they, they're not saved. So, um, I mean, like I can force force it on them like if she have questions my therapist she asks questions like when she asks me you know thanksgiving come out what you don't thanksgiving i don't celebrate holidays you know so do you mind me asking yeah you can ask you know so you know gave a little biblical teaching on and you could tell in her face oh no i don't want to hear about no jesus i ain't gonna force it you know we're, we're supposed to teach the word of god to people that are seeking him she's not seeking him but if she ever come with a question so if you uh it's on it's gonna be my cue. She's seeking. She has some questions. She wanna know. But it's just like being left alone. I think she don't like the fact that I'm kind of anti. So you got something that we talk, we can talk, you know. But y'all ain't got nothing. To, y'all ain't talking about nothing. I wanna hear. I ain't gonna be mean to you. I'm just gonna speak to you. How you doing? How your day? How you doing? You know, blah blah blah. Okay, get my sheet so I can go on and get to work. What about the ones that wants to debate with you when you tell them? Debate with who? If I'm, a, if I'm, like social media, that's not more, that's not really a debate. When you have, when you on, like when you, like with TikTok, when you debate with people, if someone put a comment on your video, this is a public platform. You have a lot of people that may say the same thing, they may think the same thing, but some people are just brave enough to say it on somebody's comment. Like, if somebody say, you wrong, this so-and-so means this. There may be a ton of people that believe that same thing. Then you respond to teach them. It's not necessarily about the person that has a problem with it. You're using their idiotic example, because most of the time it's idiotic. 
or their ignorant example to teach people that actually are seeking God. Now, if I'm one-on-one -on -one with some person, somebody, and, and um, like if I'm at physical therapy and somebody debate with me, um, we're not we're not necessarily debating. And I'm not gonna necessarily debate with you. I'm gonna, you know, my thing is okay. So if this if this is what you believe, then explain this. That's that's what I always do first. Then explain this scripture because it's a scripture that I may I may be um, using as my rebuttal. So I'm say explain this scripture. And if they can't explain it, we we can't talk. And we just talking. And then I'm gonna explain it to them. You know that's how it is. But just going back and forth with somebody who don't even love God, ain't studying God. No, I ain't going back and forth with you. But I will use your example to teach everybody else that actually may have the same mindset, but actually want the truth. You know, we're here to win souls to the kingdom. Man, we ain't need to talk to somebody that don't want their souls saved. I mean, God didn't even do that. God changed your heart to seek Him, and if you if they're not seeking you, then He hasn't changed their heart yet, or if He's going to change it at all. So we can't force something that's trying to move out of the will of God. But when you're talking to a public, like what Peter did, you know, he first received salvation, when he first received the Holy Spirit, then he talked to the public. It may be some that didn't want to hear it, but then you had some that did. And they all came to salvation. You're welcome, love. Monet. I miss my Bernie today. All right. What time is it? Yeah, I know. If I don't see Bernie, I know she working. Let me chat with her. I'll just be missing her. Like, especially if I ask what time it is, and she ain't here with the time. What time is it? What no. You're weekly. How you know if I ain't want you to, um, prayers out. Where's Shelly at? Shelly gonna pray us out? <laughs> Shelly be, Shelly be, uh, beating herself up in the middle of the prayer. We gotta get her out of that. <laughs> That's why I did that skit. So y'all, that can encourage you guys not be worrying about them prayers. That skit was funny to me, though. I actually laughed at my own skit. <laughs> Them words was crazy. The Reverend Ron. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they said God was here to tell you. Yeah, that skit was funny to me. Using them crazy words. Takata made me laugh when she was like, What in the world is a ubiquitous? <laughs> the comments were funny. I been just probably how God be for real, like, um Michael turned me up. This skit was funny. But TikTok won't let this skit hit the for you pages. And I had I I don't know why. I told me it was something about some um what, did, what was it about? What did they what was their excuse? So it was only like people that follow me that's getting it's not hitting no one's for you page. And I appealed it and no response to the appeal yet. But that was funny too when Bree said them words was childish. Bree be getting my dash. <sighs> it is on YouTube, Jimmy. Anyway. It's on YouTube, Facebook, and all. It's, it, I mean, it's it's on my page. It's it's, it's on there. But when I, when Bree said that, I was laughing at that too. Some of that word childish. <laughs> 
And unfortunately, that's how people is. And it's amazing how so many people came on and was like, they seen this. They, they, you know, seen people pray like this using them, them words and all that. And I was like, yeah, I've seen that too. That's why I did it. I want to, I really wanted to encourage somebody. Because one lady, one young lady did say this helped her. Because she always felt like her prayers were um, not enough. And to see me show both sides, it, it you know, encouraged her to pray. That's why I did it. You know, you guys inspired that. A lot, of, a lot of you guys are scared to pray because y'all are worried about if it's good enough for God, and it is. And so, that's why I did it. Bree <laughs> <laughs> is crazy. That's a false doctor. Y'all get off of uh, Taja. Hey, Lewis. Lewis be creeping. Lewis be creeping up in here. It's my buddy. Alright, what time is it? I'll check on Takata and see how she how it, like, what we're going on with her. I don't know what she's doing with the stomach. I have, I have not. I used to have stomach aches all the time. I don't even know what they feel like. I can imagine. Stomach aches are annoying. I don't know what's worse, a headache or a stomach ache. Which one is most annoying? But to have both, that's crazy. You say you got no new notification from me? Nah. I ain't even, you know, I got to post up the last Bible study. I got to post up this one and the one from last week, but. I, um. I did post the one about the, um. Let me make sure. I don't be up here lying to me need to repent. Like, yeah, I did post it. Five days ago. I post the, the, uh, the God is not impressed by big words from praying. It's up there. A toothache. Oh, man. Yeah, them toothaches. Whew. You might have that one on them. I had that toothache, boy. I was up all night crying like a baby. Yeah, you might be right on that one, Tyler. Toothache might be worse. I probably can tolerate I don't know, man. I, I mean, I can't tolerate no toothache. Toothache is tops. You know, that's... You messing with my eating, for one. <laughs> and two, like with, a, like, with a stomach ache and a headache, you can lay down and probably can sleep and fall asleep and be done with it. But a toothache? Toothache ain't letting you sleep. A toothache like, no, ain't no closing my eyes. You gonna feel this pain up in here. That's how toothaches are. Toothaches are disrespectful. So yeah, you might be right on that one, Todd. They the worst. <laughs> yeah. Right, Carmen. This is. No, you can have them two things. Uh, if I had to choose, yeah. I, I I tolerate the stomach ache. I don't even know if I could tolerate the headache over a stomach ache. Like. Shh. Go Bernie. Who will come in here now? Mm -hmm. All right.
All right, you guys, so we're gonna finish out Acts on Thursday. 24 through 28. And, um, I, um, unfortunately, guys, I may have to go back to just having, um, one day Bible study once a week. Hebrews gonna be next. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, de um, debating it now. We having too much going on. I be trying to, you know, we having a lot going on with uh with this word. You know, I be like counseling and still have to study. And I've been slack on my podcast, <clears throat> doing these little videos, responding to people. I be having a lot going on, so. We, um, it may end up just going back to just being on Thursdays. I'm not going to, uh, commit to that yet. Because I do like doing two days a week. But, you know, sometimes I'd be so tired. You know, just like I was today, I was able to take a nap, though. I'd be drained and I need my rest. So, uh, um, not committed yet. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm in it yet. But if it may come come to a point where I'm gonna have to go back to one day. <coughs> Kids, we got a Bernie Jr. You hear that? You see that Bernie? She says she's still trying to know how, know how to work technology. This your kin folk, um, Bernie. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, Janeway. <laughs> Kaz meet your sister, Bernie. Burn step, burn step, meet Kaz. Yeah, that's your twin. <clears throat> oh, I got a triplet. Hosanna. <laughs> I ain't say I was gonna stop teaching anyway. So I had to put, I had to put you on the belt for that. <clears throat> I'm called to teach. I can't not teach. <laughs> that is not happening. I'm gonna be teaching until until my time is up. The rapture come, which everyone come first. You have to you have to walk in your calling. So, no, nah, I ain't said I was going to stop teaching. I said I'm going to have to cut back on. I'm always teaching. <clears throat> I'm always serving. And I love it. So, don't, you know, take it as, 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 you know. You know, I just realized I haven't seen Mary tonight. Yeah, she going on a bell. I just realized I didn't see Mary tonight. No, Mary always speak to me. She won't hear. So I'm trying to defend her. Mary either speaks, she always say something, she always do something. I ain't seen no Mary tonight. <clears throat> Not even a laughing emoji. Mary be tired too, so I'm all slides. And she, you know, she got that newborn. That newborn be working now. She got a newborn and an itty bitty. Her sleep pattern is all messed up, so she get a pass. Because she's faithful. Hey, Mandalay. <clears throat> I'm doing well, love. How you doing? No, she ain't there. Sometimes she be forgetting. She be so drained. I mean, I used to send her a reminder, so that's on me, too. Say by grace. Hey, love. Yeah, new mamas get passes. That's right, Carmen. She got a newborn and a... One or two y'all, yes, and they all off with their sleeping. She barely get four hours of sleep, so it'd be rough. <clears throat> Man, 
it's a lot of that going on, Mandalay. I don't know what in the world. And so many people are getting sick, getting these little... Day. But I've been, they've been little baby viruses. They've been just like, just been just, you know, they've been, you know, disturbing people's day. But, you know, it ain't like Corona. Uh, you know, when, they, when we had that, COVID and all that. No, I don't have nothing going on with me. No, I just had to, My throat was just dry. No, honey. I don't I don't really get sick. You know. I don't I don't even I used to I don't even catch a cold no more. I'm about the alkaline life. I'm trying to keep my body alkaline. I'm trying to be having all the reasons. Unfortunately it ain't gonna take away the menopause uh symptoms. I wish the alkaline would do that. All the mother illness, so I don't know, I'm be getting all that stuff. You got a friend in the hospital that with the flu? <clears throat> Shows the flu? Wow. Liz, you late. You going on the belt. I'm just not saying you're rolling up in here. Tell them chemtrails, they poison us. Yes, they are. We, uh, they, the Satan can't stand us. So, yeah, let me try to take them out. And well, I know how. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Like, how you doing now, though? How you doing today? <clears throat> And you know, a lot of people say that they out here trying to poison us, and we know this. You know, they, you know, and see, the thing about it is God don't keep anything from us. We just, we, you know, a lot of us just reject the truth. If, if it's not coming from somebody that's a, that's a Christian, they think it's not of God. God used whoever he wants to to get a message out, remember? Not to teach his word, but to get us something that we need to know. This things, things of the world. So sometimes it's people of the world that's going to tell you these things. You got people posting videos all day saying, this is in the meat. This is in this. This is in that. This is in this. And people want to reject the truth. Like, it was a lady. I remember when I first came on TikTok, one of the things I posted where a lady was breaking down. Um, uh, she was she was evil, too. She was one of, them, one of the ones that worshiped Satan. But she was telling them about... Um, you know, birthdays and, uh, you know, all these different holidays, all these things they do, the things they do, she was breaking it down because she was a devil worshiper. She knew what gets them off, and she was explaining this, and folks was like, she don't know what she's talking about. Uh, yeah, she would. If she is a Satan worshiper, that means she gonna know what they do and what they use to get off. So don't be rejecting the messenger because you think she evil. She is the perfect one to explain to you what satanic stuff they do. You need to you need to take heed to that message. And some and people won't take heed to the message because the person they say, oh, she of the devil. Oh, uh, yeah, that's why you need to hear her. You know, we we always ready to take down the messenger and not pay attention to the message. So you got people that don't love God to tell you that you don't take what's in the food and maybe cursing, man, it's messed up, and there's all this stuff in and all about, and you don't want to hear, oh, you don't know, you ain't no, you ain't no um, Christian. No, they do know. Listen to them. And if you don't want to believe them, take it to God. God is just true. So he can be like, yeah. That's why I told not using to tell you. You ain't want to hear it. Gotta start rejecting these things, man. You gotta, I mean, you, 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 especially people of God, we know what's of God. We're supposed to test the spirit. We're not supposed to believe every spirit. This is why you go to God about it. This is why you seek, you un, you know, you get to understand. That's what I did when I see his stuff about the fools and all this and stuff. I went to God, I said, God, how am I supposed to eat? Because one thing I don't want to do is come to you asking you for healing and I could have been eating in a way that I didn't have to come to you for healing. You know, I don't want to come to you for something that I could prevent if I just do right by my body. And that's when he came to me and told me what he got to eat. So, you can go to God about anything. And so now that you, now that when he is, you know, showed me these things, when he came to me in a dream and showed it to me, and then I started looking at all these different videos of people explaining the stuff that I already understood because God had already revealed it to me. 
And then when you try to share this stuff, nah, they don't know what they're talking about. But yeah, they do. Just because they're not saved don't mean they don't know what they're talking about. Now, they, they, they uh, say even trying to teach us about some, about some uh, Jesus. Nah, you get someone to sit down. We got this on that end. <laughs> we got it on this end. So, and a lot of us do this, you know, you know, we make a big issue out of the foods and stuff. People are like, well, it ain't going to do my salvation, but we have work to do with the Lord, for the Lord. You never seen anybody in the Bible that was, that was, couldn't um, continue with the work that God has for them because they were sick or called something that they ate or something that they um, did to harm themselves. You know, we have to be, we can't, you, if God, say things, if God called you to um, Preach to a um, prison ministry. You got to go to the prison three days a week. But you done ate crazy, so now you're on dialysis. So them three days a week, you're supposed to be teaching the word of God. You're in the dialysis machine. When you're on dialysis, that tires you, so you ain't even want to do nothing after that. You ain't going to feel like reading the word. You ain't barely going to pray. You know what I think? You know? You, know? you ain't going to really read the word. Because, you know, because that's going to hem you up. And God never called us to be sick. That's why you never really see anybody sick in the Bible. We were never supposed to get sick. We sat up here and start eating these little crazy stuff that the world offered, and then we out and we getting enriched by being sick. So how you gonna how you gonna fulfill God's will? Sick. Why would God call you to do something and then you just sick and you can't fulfill that? You know, I thought about that. That's one of the reasons why I went to God about my health because I know he called me to teach. And I don't want to get to a point where I don't feel like teaching or I'm not feeling well, why I can't teach. That's why I went to God about the way I eat. Because, I, you know, I don't want nothing that's going to have me sick. I look at so many people getting sick. And, um, you know, and then I lost my mother-in-law um, to, uh, to cancer. And that's one of the things that she, the reason why I got so into it, because she was like, she really wished she would have paid attention to how she ate before it got to that point. Good thing she was a woman of God, so you know she won't be in the game. But that's one thing she kept getting on us. She kept trying to get us to eat these and do this and do that. Don't don't be eating that mess. Don't be doing that, cause you don't want to end up like this, you know. So um, it made me really go to God about it. What did you ask about what I do pickups at work? What did you ask me, Tarzan? Let me go back. Ask me something about that. How do people get on dialysis? Um, kidney failure. Um, um, you can, you can, diabetes. You know, they just what they say. You, um, any illness that you have, um, this is one of the benefits of being a nurse, studying these things. Any illness that we have, even a stomachache, comes from an acidic um, environment. And a lot of people like to pinpoint it to certain um, diseases that can lead you to this certain disease. And it may, and it may um, all be true. But it all comes from your body being acidic. They need a, these disorders, cancer, all these diseases, all these um, autoimmune illnesses. They need an acidic environment. That's why all the things that God provided was alkaline. All the grains. And when He said He had the herbs and you know um, the fruits that yield the fruits and vegetables that yield seeds, and He told us to use that for meat. Because those fruits and vegetables are alkaline. This is why these people never really got sick. They didn't get sick in the Bible. But they got sick in the Bible because it was a punishment that God gave them for being disobedient. And so, um, but his people know. And then again, back in these times, they weren't really getting their stuff poisoned like that. But, you know, you know what I would say, no, nah, I can't stand these people. But, you know, any disorder have to live in an acidic environment. Even um, things that's dealing with your brain, even mental illness, and it's an acidic environment. And um, and when we eat all these processed meats and these processed foods and these sugars, because sugars is eight times more addictive than cocaine, 
all these different sugars and things like that, we admit we keep our bodies acidic, leaving it prone and open to whatever illness they need to come. That's how you end up getting diabetes. Diabetes ain't coming from sugar. People say diabetes comes from sugar. No, diabetes comes from that processed meat. Every all these bad foods that you eat, and you can cure yourself of all any illness if you change your body to alkaline. Cause you're not giving, you know, you're not giving the disease or the illness nothing to thrive off of, nothing to eat. They need to feed themselves acid. And if you're alkaline, you can't feed them. Hence, it would, they would die and go away. That's what people need to understand. But Satan made these fools addictive on purpose. He put these different attitudes and um, all these different things in it to make us addicted to it. Because as long as we are addicted to it, we're going to want it. That's why they do these commercials where they make the burger look good. Like, oh, that more hitting. That more like it, man. And you know what's fake in the picture of it. You know, all of it is all the to entice us. And you just be like, oh, I kind of want to get that. Then you go get it and you end up liking it and you get addicted to it because what's in it is going to make you addicted. You're always going to want it again. Yeah, Daquan Tyrone was exposing this. I watched it. I watched it. Me and my husband watched that movie about a few weeks ago just to see what they were talking about. They exposed all of that. They was exposing the truth on that. And so, um, that's and that's what they do. They that's how they get us addicted. Because you gotta keep in mind, you gotta pay attention to how it's it's like a domino effect. This whole world is ran by Satan. Um when when Jesus when when Satan tried to offer Jesus the whole world and Jesus turned it down, he offered it to somebody else, like the Rothschilds family and all the different families he offered to them, they took the deal. So if he promised them the whole world, if they worship him, then he's gonna promise them the whole world. And they have the whole world. They own everything that we deal with, but the condition is you got to kill my people. You know, you gotta kill these people, you know, they gotta kill God's people. We ain't trying to keep them here. You know, you, you worship me, you got to take them up out of here. But you take them up out of here, I'm going to get you paid. That's why things go down the way it go down. Let's poison the foods at the stores since they got to go get it. Get their money because they got to eat. Let's get their money from the foods. Now let's make sure we poison the foods and make them sick. Why? So then they can head to the hospital. Get my hospital paid. Then we're going to make sure we, they have to get on these medications and have to get these medications. That's why they're on the same medications for the rest of their life. Because the medications is going to make them have to stay in the hospital on and off the rest of their life. And it's the medications that's making the person worse. And then they'll tell you things like, make sure you eat plenty of protein. Eat you some chicken, fish, the worst meats ever. That's worse than red meat. They make sure you eat the, the meats that's worse than anything so you can keep being sick. Not so it can make you get better. So it can keep you needing their help. Because if they if you don't need their help, then they can't get paid. The reason why they made the healthy foods extremely high to um, purchase. And the bad foods are cheap. They need you to keep walking that path of eating them bad foods. And make a make it hard for you to get that. It's almost like walking a straight and narrow. Like it's like it's hard to walk the narrow path to Christ. It's easy to walk the uh that broad. That's how they treat the food. It's it make it easy when you get the little cheap food. You know, make you get the little bad foods and all that little stuff. You can get a bag. You can get a pack of chicken for cheaper than a, a um, bowl of fruit. Yep, and the hospitals are killing people too. Why? Cause it's bonuses. It's bonuses with with COVID. You get a bonus every time you put somebody down back from COVID. And especially if you get somebody who already got some underlying issues, they pass away, tell them it's COVID. Big old bonus. And you can't be shocked. This world is ran by Satan. And everybody know God is in control of everything. God, God is controlling his people. This is not God's world. He don't want this world. That's why he told us not to conform to it. If he, if he cared anything about this world, this world, then he, he'd be like, fine, conform to it. He's telling us not to conform to it for a reason. It's to protect us. But we keep right on conforming. Yeah, let me get a two-piece on the look. Yeah. Conforming. You know? Yeah, uh, let me get a bottle of that, that Syrah. And then let me get the two little bottles. Conforming. 
Yeah, let me get a dub. I'm conforming. And then wonder why we always sick, always hear them having issues. If we didn't do these things, we won't be able to conform. That's why, that's why I said I'm going to, you know, do what I do to try to eat right. Alkaline, like me and my husband now, we just, we on a cleanse again. We we started our cleanse today. That's why you see me with the water and got my salsa virility tea and stuff like that. We're doing a cleanse. Because if you clean, if you clean your colon, the colon is the reason why you're sick. The reason why our stomachs be bloated and... All this stuff, we just got to do better by ourselves. And if you and if, and all you got, and then you have to go to God about it. You know, you got to see God on it. God, show me this, show me that. God will reveal these things to you. Why? Because He's here to protect us. He's telling us not to conform to the world for a reason. And ask Him, God, what's wrong with the food? And He gonna break it down to you. This is what's wrong with it. Stay away from it. I got you. You know, but it, because a lot of us so. Stubborn, we you know we pray over our food and you know make sure it don't harm us and stuff like that. But look how many people in the cancer um, centers, look how many people on dialysis, look how many people that's always at the pharmacy getting meds. You mean telling me all these people, these are millions of people, I'm just getting sick like this? We all eat the same stuff. And I ain't trying to deal with it. I ain't, you know, no. And when the fact that God revealed it to me, what if I choose to eat crazy f foods after he showed me, I get what I deserve. If I get sick, I get exactly what I deserve. Because he has shown me that it's not good for me. I went to him and he showed me, came to me in a dream, and then told me to revive Dr. Sebi's lifestyle, his, his way of eating. Showed it to me, showed me reviving him in a dream, bringing him back to life. That was enough for me. So if I choose to go out here and eat all this crazy stuff, I get exactly what I deserve if I get sick. Because it ain't like he ain't show me. And some people don't know. Some people ain't getting it yet. And, you know, God has been patient with them and making sure they're good. But in me, he has shown me. So it's, I'm without excuse. So I can't sit up and, and he showed me and I eat any kind of way. Then I go to God. God needs you to heal me. He's going to be like, uh, didn't I uh, warn you? I give you the warning. So if you know, I'm without excuse. Yeah, and, and spinach. I don't mess with spinach. You got that right, man. Like, we were raised to think that spinach was one of the better vegetables for us, and it's not. It's one. It's not a good vegetable. Spinach is acidic. Cabbage, collars, stuff that we love. Acidic. I use kale. I mess with that kale. And I can make some kale taste like some collars. <clears throat> I don't mess with nothing but kale. Um, romaine. All the mushrooms. I really don't mess with shiitakes, though. But even my coffee is a mushroom. I do all the, all the um, roots. Salsa virula root. Burlock root, elderberry root, um, all that stuff. I'm definitely messing with caffeine. Sugars, you get replaced with agave. Yep. And sometimes, you know, we eat vegan, like we may eat vegetables and stuff like that. We take a break and may eat just vegan and not alkaline vegan, and that's when we do our cleanse. That's when I do our cleanse. Um, if I eat, if I eat collards, I may eat some cabbage or something like that. You know, then I do a cleanse. I only mess with agave, love, agave and date syrup, date sugar, agave. That's it. I don't mess with no stevia. I don't do none, nothing else, nothing else. I don't mess with nothing but agave and date syrup. And then a lot of times when I make, um, when I do date sugar, I make my own date sugar. I just take some pitted dates and bake them and then um, wind it up and process them. 
I'm telling you, the thing about being alkaline, it's a lot of prepping and it gets tiresome. And that's why sometimes me and my husband will just go. We we got a lady out here that does, she has an alkaline food truck. And she was out here in Durham last week and I missed her. But when she was at the state fair, we was tearing her truck up. Because she's straight alkaline, all her food. She was the only person that had alkaline. I was like, and all her burgers was good. Everything alkaline. Her burgers was made out of like beets and squash and it tastes like a, all her food was so good to me. And then too, it, yeah, yeah, you know, when you first try to switch over to alkaline food, eating foods like that, it's not good to people when they first start. Like, like Takadia didn't like it. <laughs> you know, it's you, you know, your your body, your your tongue, your your taste buds has to change for that. You know, and so when we when we got Takadia to eat the stuff, Takadia was like, "Oh, that stuff is nasty." It was banging to me and to Negan <laughs> and us. Because we even come accustomed to it, you know? But that it was it was good. The, they, the lady was making a lot of money out there. The people was loving their food. I sure was. I was like, Lord, she need to be here. Because if we want to eat takeout, then that's straight alkaline. She don't do nothing but alkaline. She did give me the, all the ingredients that she put in her stuff. She said, take a picture of it and make it yourself. I'm like, that prepping be getting on my nerves. I'll be taking a break from cooking. Ezekiel bread on. And see, I sometimes I eat, like we got a, uh, we got a sprouts here. I know some of y'all probably got a sprouts. And they have a, they have a vegan bread that they bake. It has basically nothing in it. No sugar, no nothing, no nothing. And you think the bread is going to be just nasty. Like you have no ingredients. So I may get that, that. I don't mess with nothing else. Um, Cause you know, I, you know, my bread still gotta taste good. But a lot of times I usually bake my own loaf of bread. I usually make my own loaf of bread. Um, my, I, mean, I told you I've been like beat, been tired. You still eat broccoli, gosh. Might as well eat. Broccoli is man-made. They don't even, they ain't even grown. They make that in the lab. That and cauliflower, I don't miss none of that stuff. But I wouldn't, I'm not trying to tell you guys what to eat. I just won't, I just don't eat that stuff. I don't eat Ezekiel bread. I don't, um, I've had Ezekiel bread. It's not good. I mean, my food at least got it. My food still got to be good. Eating is supposed to be fun. I still want it to be fun to eat. But broccoli, no. Broccoli and cauliflower, no. That's worse than spinach. If I had to choose, I would tear some spinach up over some broccoli and some cauliflower. Like, no, you might as well just go ahead and just put a gun in your hands. Like, you know what? <sighs> Boom! No, I don't mess with that. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, yeah, I made my own loaf of bread and slice it on up. Out of chickpea flour. And, and you know, you don't use no eggs or anything like that. So you, to make it rise, you got to use... um. Sparkling spring water. And it has to be sparkling spring water that's alkaline. What's that? Pe Pellegrino, whatever. That that type of that water. That's alkaline sparkling water. That's what's going to help make your bread rise. Since we don't do eggs. And so, um, you got to be careful with it too. Because it won't rise. When you pour the sparkling water in there, you, got, you can't just vigorously stir. You got to fold it in there. So it will rise. I got a few um alkaline videos on my um page where I did some type of I did I think like I got like two, three videos up where I did some type of cooking some some cooking recipes. Get people started on it. But I'm praying that you guys, you know, that God that you seek God about your health, about your about your way of eating and um, ask God to guide you on how you should eat. I don't want to be forcing nobody because the last thing I need somebody to feel like I'm forcing them into eating stuff they, they don't want to eat. I want you guys to seek God about your eating habits. And um, and ask God to show you the truth about these, this, you know, this meat. Um, oh, thank you, Jamie. You know what, Jamie? I'm going to have to agree with you on that because when I went back and looked at my old video clips when I had the gap my face was fat and I used to have my little wrinkle looking forehead up here and 
Yeah, the alkaline does change your skin. It does. Because everybody keeps saying that. Your skin is changing. Your skin is like, even my daughter said that to me a while back. The alkaline does it. The alkaline, the alkaline does it. And I ain't got, ain't got no ingredients that's gonna harm me. Everything is natural. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, so many people said that, and I wasn't paying attention to it until one day somebody liked the old video I did. From back in the day, I was like, oh, I said, I told my husband, I said, look how I got, look how big I, my face I got big. But I said, it wasn't even that. It's like, oh, my skin got all old looking. I just can't remember my forehead being like, you know, it's, oh, I was like, my skin is so different. You know, that terrible mess. And then I won't help in the situation now because I was in sin, so I was smoking cigarettes and all that stuff. So I was looking a hot man. But I was like, I did not like my skin. I look at them videos, I was like, God, my skin looks terrible. Alkaline did it. So yeah, if you if you have an issue with your skin and you want to want it to change up, yeah, definitely go alkaline. Salt and water. They only drink spring water, like they did in the Bible. They drink spring water. In the Bible. And that lukewarm water they had got when Laodicea, they was getting their lukewarm water sent through these aqueducts. So they, their water was coming in bad. They was Their water was coming in mixed in with dirt a little bit. And it came lukewarm. I mean, I'm pretty sure they, they filtered and cleaned. I mean, they cleaned that water out, but it still was lukewarm. And, but it was still spring water. Natural spring water. No other, you shouldn't be drinking no purified water, no distilled. The only time you can drink distilled water is when you're putting in, when you're mixing it in um, these little liquids to have. Like, like I used to get this liquid called Bio Iron, I think. It was a mixture of uh, salsa gorilla, burdock root, elderberry. It was just like a liquid. You need the distilled water for that because you need water that has nothing pour it in there so you can, that'll make it strong but just drinking these still water i was jumping to some traffic that's how you're gonna drink and i go to the um to um my uh physical therapist are you gonna drink some water that boy i said what kind of water is that these two i would rather be in here dehydrated working out before i drink that mess so i have to bring my own water I say, I say, y'all, all the water that y'all choose, y'all pick distilled. I mean, I'd rather you tolerate, I'd rather tolerate purified. Cause you gonna put some distilled water in, in here, like, nah, nah, I'm good. And I was like, put that in your radiator for your car or something. spring and a friend of mine she actually found a river she went somewhere and she actually found a place that where she can get her natural spring water actually from the lake the river and it was so clean and purified she sent me pictures of it i make sure i still have it she like i got my I, so she just like there go mary she did let me know that she uh she wasn't gonna make it I knew it was something wrong, right? That's my little dumb point now. Um, let me see if I can find a picture. Well, she actually go to the to that river in her spring water. You said the doctor was shocked that I knew about. He was shocked that you knew about cocoa water. He probably was mad. You knew about that coconut water. Hold up! Don't be knowing stuff. Cause coconut is good for you. Coconut is alkaline. That's true, Mandalay. That process is yep. You're dead on with that love. <coughs> but again, I'm gonna pray you guys. I'm gonna pray that God open your eyes um to that to that food. Cause like I said, I know it's addictive and I know it's hard. Just like Taza said, she's trying to get out of it. You know, I try not to force you, you know, you let God 
you know, do what he do. But the information is there and the, um, and the truth is there about the food. And you you have to decide, um, do you want to be sick? Do you want to live? You know? And ask God to just deliver you from that addiction because food is addictive. Um, it really is. It really is addictive. And, um, and, and Satan set it up that way. He did it on purpose. This, this is why, again, why the hospitals are filled with so many sick people. Um, because it is the food. It's nothing else but the food. Because that is the very thing that we need um, to survive. So he used that to his advantage. Oh, you know they got to eat. Let's just go and just attack the food, you know? Keep them sick. Keep the hospitals full. I'm going to keep y'all. I told y'all, if y'all worship me, I'm going to give y'all the world. But you got to do it my way. So take the food. Y'all want to get paid. You want to you be, you know... You want to run the hospital so you can get rid of pay? Take the food, get the hospital filled up. You know, stop making this conscience rap music and all this. Man, now we need to make music that's going to make people want to be thugs and gangsters. So let's make this gangster music. Because we, we need the prison filled up. So make the gangster music because, you know, we love good old song. Make you want to do stuff. You know, we like try to do with things. We like the movies. Think the movies about thugs. Let's make boys in the hood. Men's the side of getting have people like, yeah, yeah. Break yourself, fool. Have everybody just want to do that stuff. We need to have it in their mindset. We need the prison field, though. Y'all say, I told y'all, if y'all worship, I'm going to give y'all the world. So let's, let's, flip, let's get these prisons filled up. This made people get paid a lot of money just to rip, run up and down a uh, court for us and tie themselves out and kill themselves playing the game when we sit back collect money. But we're going to get them paid, though. Let's show them all the stuff they can have. Let's do a, let's do a show. Let's do an MTV Cribs. Let's, do all this, let's show them they had them wanting this stuff so they can cover it after this stuff. Then you got every kid out in the basketball court trying to get good at basketball so they can get that well. Don't realize what they got to do to get that wealth. You know. Satan's world. This is Satan's world. You ever notice that you don't really see... Um, a lot of the celebrities... Uh, the athletes and all that. You notice the athletes don't really get sick... Now, they will. It is entertainment, so they will throw somebody in there saying, oh, so-and-so died of cancer. No, they ain't dying of cancer. Why? Because they're not eating the stuff that we're eating. You know, they're not eating the stuff that we're eating. Why? Because they are the ones that worship Satan. He's not, you know, he's going to betray them later. But um, there you go, kids. They be cloning them and all this stuff. Why you only seen them getting sick and all this other stuff. And if you do say, oh, so-and-so died of this and so-and-so died of that, they didn't die of this stuff. Y'all better start seeing God about this world. Because if you seek God about this world, then you stop conforming to it. You know, I used to be so addicted to sports. Me and my husband, basketball, we love football, we love watching those sports. And we were so addicted to it. It was our thing, you know, this was our thing. Okay, the gang, get ready to come on, get the food. What we gonna order? Someone so okay, get the stuff, all this stuff, we can watch this little game. Find out the truth about these these sports. Truth about this food. You stay away from it. No longer conforming to that life. So now we don't be sitting around getting ready prepped up for no game. You know, we ain't prepped up, we ain't calling the um, you know, order no no pizzas and nothing to come in and get ready for no game because we learned the truth about it. This is why God reveals the truth about us so we can stop conforming to it. We learned the truth about the sports. We learned the truth that it was, it was, it, the stuff is rigged and all that stuff. So they need to watch them. There you go. Stop conforming to it. Stop going out there, paying your money, go get tickets to see them games live. Stop conforming to it. So you learn the truth about it, you won't conform to it. Everything is, yeah, that's right, kids. Everything is scripted. This whole world is scripted. That's why God said don't conform to it. False prophets, fake, everything fake about Satan. God is the real deal. That's why I say, follow me. Don't follow the fake. Follow me. I ain't fake. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to forsake you. I'm not going to trick you. I'm going to give you the real deal. 
And what I give don't add sorrow. You're going to keep having sorrow every time you follow the ways of the world. You know? You want to follow the ways of the world? You get drunk, you get torpid, you get high, with it's not happening. Get in a car wreck, kill somebody, kill yourself. Get caught in some type of crime. You know? I told you not to go that route. I told you to do it because I don't want you to stay sober. My need to stay sober. My need won't do stupid things. But no, we follow the way of the world and do stupid things. You know, smoke, don't smoke, don't defile the temple of cigarettes. Oh, no, I feel too good to smoke cigarettes. Then you got heart failure, congestive heart failure, you got cancer. See, see, I told you not to conform to the world. This is what I was protecting you from, but you want to go on and do it. Don't fornicate. Wait till you get married. You got that fornicate, you got about eight baby daddies. You know, standing in the hood. Can't afford it, can't do nothing. You know, called STD and did all this. I told you not to conform to the world. But you wanted to do it anyway. I tried to protect you from that. That's so why I told you wait to get married. Save it for marriage. When you married, he dare. Now, what you want to go the way of the world? All these things that God is telling us not to conform to. These are things that Satan is offering. He's offering you all these things because he's telling you, he's telling you not to conform to it. Don't fall for this stuff. I know it's pleasurable. I know it feels good to you. You know, I know it. I know it feels good to you. I know this is why he does it. That's why he's giving these addictions. But don't fall for it. Just follow me. But if you don't follow me, then you get what you get. It's all this. This is the reason why we're not supposed to conform to this world. Everybody think the world things is limited. No, it's just something. No, nothing that this world offers. We're supposed to go for it. It's not to make our lives miserable, it's to protect us because this, because this is Satan's world. Satan is not God. He's not, he don't love us. He's not gonna offer us anything that's gonna make the, the, the that's gonna help our salvation, that's gonna keep us um happy. He is he is here to kill, steal, and destroy. God is here that you have life and have it more abundantly. But we keep following the kill, steal, and destroy God. We don't want the abundance. Because abundance don't appease to the flesh. Satan is the flesh God. We're supposed to be with the spirit God. And we keep following the flesh because the flesh feels good. The flesh is comfortable. God pours you in a place of discomfort. That's why the reward is so big. The kingdom of heaven is a big reward. You ain't just going to be getting it all willy-nilly. You got to earn that reward. And earning that reward is denying your flesh. It's a big thing to do. It's not easy to do. But when you can do that, that reward is big. You look at that reward and like, it's worth it. It was worth giving up everything. But we don't want to give up everything. We want to appease the flesh now. We want to feel good now. Don't care about the consequences. Go out and disobey God in the room. I say, God got me. No, no, that, no, he ain't got Not our God. He ain't got you. He didn't, he tried to warn He had you. When he tried to tell you not to go out here and do it, but you ain't want it. So no, he ain't got you. You about to, you about to face that consequence. You know, even, even if you come to Christ, you still got to face that consequence of being hard-headed. So, it's not worth it. It's not worth it when 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 God said don't conform to this world, don't conform to this world. I don't care what it is. There's always something. There's always something that's there's always a lie in the things of this world. There's always something that's gonna show there's a lie. You're always gonna face disappointment. You know, it's, you're always going to face disappointment. God is not going to allow you to face disappointment. The Bible said, the blessings, the blessings of the Lord make the rich and add no sorrow. Satan's little blessing is going to always add sorrow. Yeah, he got them if he chose them to salvation. You know, just like he called, just like he called us to salvation, and we went out there and we did all this crazy stuff. Yeah, he got those. 
You know, if he called you to salvation, just like he called everybody in that Bible to salvation. And even though Paul was out there doing his mess, he still had Paul. Why? Because he had always planned on saving Paul. It was always the plan to use Paul to um to reach the Gentiles. So even though Paul was persecuting and killing and acting a fool, God kept him because he had a plan for him. He ain't got a plan for everybody. A lot of people died in their mess. That's right, Lisa. God's plan. And we, and we, you know, even though our, our faith and our walk with Christ is not, you know, um, of words, it's God changing us. We still have to do our part. You know, like when he, when we, even though he's the one that cleanses us, of, cleanses us of all unrighteousness, we still have to read the word to be clean. He's not going to read the word for us. He's not gonna study the word for us. He's not gonna pray for us. So when you say things like, like when you like when I went to God about how I eat, if I'm supposed to do a work for the Lord, if He called me to teach, and I don't want to be end up having a way where I can't teach, then you go to God about it. God, make sure that I don't, you know, I got a work to do for you. You don't want to conform to the ways of the world that's gonna keep you from fulfilling His promise. Like the things, like all of these apostles, they stay on course. They stayed on course. They didn't they didn't get derailed. They didn't, you know what? Well, let me go on my hand and try to know they stayed the course. They didn't let anything that's gonna keep them from fulfilling the will of God. And just like I said, I felt this was a personal thing for me. I felt like if I ate all these bad foods and I'm and mommy by me being a nurse, watching all these people sick, watching all these people on meds, watching all these people going to think because you and I know it's the food, I don't want I got work to do for God. I don't want anything that's going to hinder me from doing a work from God, especially on me witnessing what this stuff does to us. Got work to do. I want to fulfill it. And you go to God about these things. When God see that you want to fulfill it, I'm here, I'm going to get you right. Like he said, God got you. Yeah. He's the only one we're supposed to depend on, kids. It's so true. I don't know what I'm supposed to depend on. No one else. So, um, I hope this bless you guys. And I hope this motivates you to seek God. Um, pray for strength. You know, in your walk, change your lifestyle. Because all of us here, if you, if you know you have been, if you are saved and you know you are sold out of Christ, you are here, you got work to do. You're not here just to be saved for yourself. You hear the win souls to the kingdom. And you can't do that out of commission. You know? Hey Amen, man. So, I pray this bless you guys. So, so I'm going to um, pray us out. Um, <laughs> say, if I'm a nurse. Yes, I am. I've been a nurse um, almost 12 years. Um private duty nurse. I used to work in the clinics. I'm kind of missed the clinics. I kind of, I used to work in the refugee clinics. I used to love the refugees. They would, you know, a lot of them went through so much, witnessed so much and coming over here, but I used to love being the refugee nurse. I kind of miss it, but you know, God's plan. Amen. To God be the glory, yeah. That's right, kids. All right, so no one have any other questions? Yeah, prayers out. Hey, man. Thank you, Bernie. So, I'm going to pray this out. Blessings to you, Mandalay. All right. Lord, we thank you always for an amazing night. We thank you, Lord God, for the people that you brought in tonight. New faces, um, 
old faces that hadn't been here for a while. We know, Lord God, that you do everything on purpose. So we know that those that came in tonight was who you sent here tonight, Lord God, and we thank you. We pray, Lord God, that this um, Bible study and this Bible talk and, um, will be a blessing to each individual, Lord. We know that it will. We thank you, Lord God, for always being there for us, having our backs, never forsaking us, teaching us the way that we should go. We thank you, Lord God, for always protecting us. We know, Lord God, that you love us, and we know, Lord God, that everything that you tell us to do, the way that you guide us is always to protect, and it's always to show that, you're that you have a love for your people, and we thank you. And, Lord God, I know sometimes we take you for granted. Lord, sometimes we act like you're not... That we don't under we we don't understand sometimes what you're telling us, Lord God. But we thank you for revelation, and we know, Lord God, that in order for us to understand that we have to continue to seek your face, and we pray, Lord God, that we always desire to seek your face, because we know seeking you is truth. We know that we're gonna find truth, and we thank you always for it. And Lord God, I lift up your people on tonight, Lord God. All of your people that desire to to um, walk in that will, walk in that purpose. We ask, oh God, that you give them the desire to not conform to the ways of this world. We ask, oh God, that you give them the desire to always put you first, Lord God, to deny themselves, Lord, and not to fall for any of the schemes of Satan. We ask, oh God, that you change our desires to how, to, how we should eat, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you lead us to the foods that you have provided for us. We ask, oh God, that there be any illnesses, there be any sicknesses that we may have, Lord God, that you reverse it right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord God, that you give us the strength that we need because we know that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And we ask, oh God, that you continue to strengthen us in our everyday walk spiritually and in our everyday walk physically. And Lord God, we again thank you for this teaching on tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for using me. Thank you, Lord God, for choosing me. And I pray, Lord God, that I continue to live my life diligently. And I ask the same for each and every individual in here on tonight. And for those that did not show up on tonight, Lord God, we ask that you bless them. We ask although that they're not here tonight, Lord God, that they are still in line with you. And we give you the honor and the glory for it. And Father God, we lift you up right now. And we give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Remember, we are finishing up Acts on Thursday. Amen, amen. And we just pray you guys be ready for the test. I may, I may not get all the tests, but, you know, just be prepared just in case. Again, you guys have a great night, and I love each and every one of you. And I want you guys to know something. I don't say that just to be saying it. I truly love each and every one of you. And I pray that you guys continue to grow in Christ and continue to grow a love for Christ and his people. And you guys have a great night. And I will see you on Thursday.